we'll be going over Detective Comics 1008, Flash issue 75, Justice League Dark number 13, House of X number 1, and Batman Curse of the White Knight number 1. Hello everyone, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank, another rapid fire comic book review. So first up we have Detective Comics issue 1008. So I was a bit harsh on the previous story of Detective Comics with the Spectre because the problem I had with the Spectre coming to Gotham City was all these arsonists, rapists, you know, um, murderers, psychopaths in Gotham City and God's vengeance has apparently been there the whole time and it's done nothing, you know. Why? But it sort of occurred to me this was sort of like um, just a little breather after the last story. And maybe Detective Comics is going in this direction now with a couple of short stories and even shorter stories in between those, which was probably fun. Um, Detective Comics 1008 is sort of like a bigger, um, personally a bigger fi middle finger to me because I was complaining that, you know, the Spectre doesn't do anything about Joker. This issue is the Joker just doing a, doing a little scheme. It's not, it's not like, you know, the be-all, end-all attempt to reconstruct how we view the Joker and Batman's relationship. No, the Joker's just doing a thing. Batman has to stop him doing a thing. And that was it. This may be my favorite Joker story because of that. Because uh, I'm, I'm very tired of the Joker. I am him, Harley. I'm kind of done with them for the most part. If they're in a good stuff, they're in a good, they're in a good thing, fine. But every time I see them, especially in Batman, every time Joker shows up, it has to be like, oh, well, now we have to reevaluate Batman and Joker's relationship. Like, no. We don't, have to, some, we don't have to keep trying to tell the definitive Joker story. Just have a story with the Joker doing a thing. Go back to his roots. You know, the Joker does a thing. Batman stops him from doing the thing. Joker's like, rats. And that's it. And this is what it was. Joker um, strapping bombs to the neckties of people at, a, at an amusement park. And Batman has to play along with the Joker to find out what happens. Love it. Short, sweet, to the point. Yes. Overall, a really good story. Next, Flash, issue 75. So this is the conclusion of Flash War. Not Flash War, Flash Year One. And honestly, it ends about the way just about every Flash story does. How is Barry going to pull the win? Well, he's got to run. He's got to run. And this time, to be fair, this is sort of an emotional thing. And it is sort of reflecting the people of Central City. And I think recent, recent years, only really um, Detective Comics sort of dealt with this, whereas Batman encourages the people of Gotham City, like, you know, you can do this, guys. You can you can overcome this. You know we're pe we're Gothamites. You know we don't break easily. And Central City is a bit different. Where I think Gotham is, likes to be tested. Gotham, like you know, we can deal with it, and it's not going to break us. Central City sort of seems like you know we pull together at that moment, and it's really cool seeing how Iris is able to destroy the tower, and it helps free everybody else up. But everyone else is feeling like, well, let's rely on you know, this new guy, the Flash. And it's like, no, no, we can help the Flash. We can just do a thing. Let's, like, you know, uh, push the other guys around, and we're in. And I like that. I like that. Even more so how, when, how Barry, I think this is the story where Barry first properly connects with the Speed Force. And I like that, what it means to him, how it feels like he's connected to not just the multiverse, the Speed Force, but, like, everything the Speed Force is about and how he interprets it. I like that. The one thing I don't like about this story is the costume seems to be a sort of like a an accident or like it just happens Barry has a costume and that's kind of it I always felt like the creation of a costume should be really important and the reveal at the end of this is that this is a story Barry's being told by the new holder of the still force called Steadfast I think is really cool because it turns out Barry didn't remember this uh, Steadfast is like you had to remember this because something is coming pretty much because of what crap you and Wally did during Flash War where you broke the speed force and you have to remember that because you have to be ready for it and I like okay cool I like it overall Flash uh, Flash Year One in addition to Flash War has been reason enough for me to want to get the Flash volume with Lux edition and to pretty much say I'm going to be reading the Flash from now on although I think I did say that for Flash War so bear with me Justice League Dark issue 13 was oof was um, kind of dull, but at the same time really interesting. The question, there were, there were two stories here. One was deciding who becomes the new holder of Fate's Helmet, and the other was Zatanna and Constantine pretty much talking about, you know, what Zatara was um, hiding from them, or what, she, what he was hiding from Zatanna. 
And I'm like, okay, maybe, sure. Um, that didn't interest me as much as the stuff in the beginning with who will become the new holder of Fate's helmet, who will become the new Doctor Fate. And of course, we have two um, two candidates, and one is Kent Nelson, the original holder of the helmet, the original Doctor Fate. He's like, no, I don't want to do it. No, that helmet messed me up. Even before this, it caused problems. Look, I don't want to do it. My boy Khalid. I'm like, come on, come on, guys. I'm begging you, make Khalid Nasur. The new Doctor Fate. Come on, like his book was pretty unremarkable. He deserves better than that. He's a great choice. He's like, I don't think I'm ready yet. And give him a couple years. And that might mean he's never going to be Doctor Fate. I just think he's the best choice. But they've resolved to stay pretty much on the team as magical consultants. I mean, they've read the scrolls of Merlin. They know magic without the helmet. So, yeah, why not? Where's Khalid's family? That's my question now. Uh, granted, Khalid is um, Kent Nelson's great nephew, so whatever. Um, the stuff with Constantine and Zatanna was pretty forgettable. It sort of just does what they always do with their relationship. You know, Zatanna's like, you know, you're going to help me do this thing, and then I'm ne I never want to see you again. And, yeah, that's what they always do. It's kind of irritating at this point. But overall, uh, this was a really solid issue. Really nice. Take a deep breath. It was all done. It was awesome. And... Now we're going to go towards the future. Next was House of X, Issue 1. So, I love Jonathan Hickman's work. I loved his work on the Fantastic Four. I loved his work on the Avengers. I actually haven't read all of his work for the Avengers because it's a, it's a lot. I like Secret Wars. I also liked, um, what was it, Incursion? And Infinity. I, I love what I can get through of Infinity. Infinity is heavy stuff. Hickman is a big picture kind of guy. And it's a shame DC couldn't get him. But anyway... His House of X book, his first issue, was, I think, pretty promising. Where it turns out um, the mutants are now having their own nation. And they want the world nations, the UN, to pretty much acknowledge them in exchange for a bunch of other medical um, medical advances. Like, a, there's a pill that will extend your life for five years. I'm like, okay, that's good. Um, this is pretty much seeing exactly what happens when Professor X decides to do this. Um, I'm not an expert on Genosha, but I think that was pretty much an... Magneto plan for the most part. I could be wrong. I could legitimately be wrong. I didn't really read that. But what this book really did was sort of show you the, the new status quo of the mutant world. You know, um, Jean Grey is back as Miss Marvel. Cyclops is back. Wolverine is there. Storm is there. And everyone, every mutant is invited to this, to Kroka. Kroka. I think it's Kroka. And Charles has even gone the extra mile of creating a new language for the mutants that he has telepathically inserted into all their brains. As Magneto points out, who is Charles' ambassador to this, is saying this is how culture begins, with language, with words, with its own letters. I'm like, okay, cool. And the UN or the world leaders have a reason to be concerned because how Charles plans to recruit more people, rather get more people, with his new portable Cerebro helmet, love that thing, is that this new dimension, a nation, wherever he is, he can reach people wherever they are. He pretty much can boom to, just sort of teleport wherever. And where Magneto says this is an amazing way to get refugees, as the as the world leaders point out, this is also a great way for you to deploy troops. All right, I'm not saying you plan to do that, but this will totally redefine war as we know it. And that's true. Overall, where House of X will go in the future from this one issue, we don't quite know, but we are seeing that it is a project that everyone is invested in. And it's going to be nice to see what Hickman's seven-year plan for the X-Men is going to be. Strap yourselves in, kid. Hickman's back in town. And finally, we have Batman, Curse of the White Knight. So this is a continuation of Sean Murphy's uh, previous story, Batman White Knight, where the most simple idea is, what if someone gave Joker his medicine? Created one of the most interesting stories, and possibly one of my favorite Joker stories? Uh, please take into account what I said earlier about the Joker in my Detective Comics 1008 video. Yeah. So this story deals with, I'm not quite sure if they mentioned how much time has passed, since the events of Batman White Knight. But it is clear that Gotham City is actually trying to change for the better. Um, Arkham Asylum is being rebuilt, but Joker still escapes from it. And he's apparently really mad at what Sane Joker, aka Jack Napier, did to Gotham City, and hence make it better. And he's, he's, he's determined to reveal this one big secret, this one secret he knows that apparently goes back to the very foundation of Gotham City itself. So that's interesting, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that plays off. The secret being that Jean-Paul Valley, who in this you know, in this story 
is a quote unquote retired army soldier is descended from the actual founder of Gotham City and is implied that um, Ed Edmund Wayne, the first Wayne to come to Gotham City uh, usurped power from from Jean Paul's ancestor. So that's interesting. On Bruce's standpoint, it seems he's very set on publicly revealing that he is Batman. And the problem is this will totally destroy the Wayne family legacy and what Waynes mean to Gotham City because during the events of Batman White Knight, uh, Batman was revealed to pretty much just be an incompetent boob for the most part, which I think is sort of the reason he's doing it. Like, he can't work with the new Gotham Task Organization because during Napier's plan, you know, saying Joker, during saying Joker's attempts to reveal the follies of the city, the corruption that Batman was unaware of, it's ultimately revealed him to be totally ineffective. So Batman's like, there's no point to me, you know? Batman will only exist as long as I feel he should be, and this whole endeavor, if anything, has proven that he's not good at anything. So Bruce is resolving to do that, but Dick has been able to talk him out of it for the most part, or at least Dick and Jim Gordon have been able to keep him from revealing it to the world right now. He's already told Gordon. So that was the comics of the... That was, that was it. Um, I'm not quite sure what I like the most about this week, which is actually what I think is a really good moment in comic books. This is actually all the books I read. Um, well, not all of them, but I thought Scooby-Doo Apocalypse had already... And I thought I read the last volume. I didn't, so I'll be doing a video on that, as well as some other new books that I've picked up for a slightly different segment I might work on. But anyway, with that in mind, we're going to bring this video to a close here. If you're about to think, think, feel to like, comment, share, subscribe, smash that thumbs up button, and I will catch you all later. This is the Buggy Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.